us, a channel where we play chess against AI. Okay, so we are recording this on the big reveal we record, we, we block record, but we're recording ah. this on November 18th, 19th. 19th. <laughs> I yeah. cannot remember what day it is. It's fine. Remember um, we walked away from recording the podcast on Friday and I said, hey, are you okay? And you said, no, are you okay? And I said, no. <laughs> and then we got in our cars and drove home. <laughs> so one week ago, at exactly the same time that Gabe was set to come today, mm -hmm. around 1 p.m. On a, on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, a terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible thing happened. Where to begin? Okay, so I'm a true crime girly, and I know it's bad, and I know it's unethical, but part of me is like, I need to be aware, I need to know all the bad things that could happen, and you said that a serial killer wouldn't, you would never think a serial killer would get you, because you're not that special. That's what you well, said. I don't think that anymore. Oh. Not that I now think I'm so special, but just, I just realized that, like, that was not, like, rational thinking. Oh, okay. So I'm pretty much always uh, to, attuned to stranger danger. I'm talking in circles. Okay, so I roll up to Allison's house and uh, I'm parking across the street from her house and I start to parallel park and trigger warning for everything. Um, and I start to parallel park and I'm like halfway to it and all of a sudden a car pulls around in front of me that I had not previously seen, didn't know, didn't understand what had happened. I had apparently cut him off in traffic earlier. Uh, or around that time, spoiler alert. Um, and he pulls around so that he's in front of my car and uh, he gets out and I think he thinks he rear-ended me, but he didn't. So I almost opened my door to be like, you're fine, dude. Um, but then I see he is carrying a, a glass breaker and a hammer and I'm like, okay, that's odd. Uh, and he's screaming and um, he starts screaming and uh, he proceeds to use the glass breaker to try to bash in my windshield, the driver's side window, and um, then he can't do that. So he starts kicking in the door uh, to the driver's side and screaming. And uh, I, uh, try, I try to open the passenger um, side window to yell for help. There was someone standing there who ignored the entire situation, who I think Allison will slit his throat upon seeing him. It was my mailman. Yeah. My mailman just watched Gabe get attacked and did nothing. And we have video footage of him doing nothing. Yeah, he, I was screaming. I mean, I'm not saying you have to insert yourself into the situation, but to not call the police or not stick around to be a witness or to like see if it was escalating, but to just like go about your business is like horrifying to me. Yeah, he did nothing. Um, so I'm screaming for help. Um, and, uh, the guy, uh, makes it clear he is going to kill me, but I managed to roll up the window and then the windows to the Subaru, by the way, great ad for Subaru, uh, the windows held. So he had, he had a glass breaker, like fully a glass breaker and, um, it, the window didn't shatter. Neither of the windows shattered. He scratched and the door didn't give in. Like he kicked the, the door, tried to kick the door in and it, and it dented, but it didn't kick in. So um, the Subaru held, which pissed him off more. I got a picture of his license plate, which I'm very proud of myself for. Um, and then I texted Allison to come outside so we could call 911 and a neighbor came out and, um, and then the uh, police eventually came 45 minutes later and said, is he still here? He was not. And then I came into Allison's house and she had uh, her first two coaching sessions. So we didn't end up recording and I f passed out in her gym um, on the couch, fell asleep from just being so worked up. And then I stayed for a while until I felt like I could drive home. And... Now I am in going back to trauma therapy uh, and I've had to go back and forth with the police and sending more information and um, yeah and like deal with my insurance which took me a while to do because I just oh yeah and then I just kind of spent a, a while just kind of like in my house not really wanting to go anywhere or do anything. I wasn't allowed to do anything to car so a couple days later a forensic person came and dusted for prints and um, tested for like what they thought maybe was a blood sample on the car 
And because I work a job, I had to drive my car. So I have been dealing with like having to spend multiple hours a day kind of sitting in the crime scene, <laughs> uh, which sucks. Um, and I'm scared to drive. And I am just talked to the therapist today about uh, figuring out how to come back from that. Um, and also uh, terrified of cars that look like that guy's car. And terrified of guys who look like that guy. And what else? Uh, just nervous system shot to hell. The whole, I won't get into everything that happened, but the whole encounter was um, incredibly violent and um, he made it extremely clear that he intended to kill me. Uh, and so anyway, um, that was last week. Um, how was it on your end, Allison? <laughs> I mean, I just feel like... Road rage incident, random, completely random. Yeah. I don't know this person, stranger. I just feel like people are out of control. Like, yeah. I just feel like... Uh, um, and I don't know. I don't know if it's like that this man's just been doing this his whole life or like, I don't know if like COVID has just like messed up all of our brains or, yeah. but like the police said that like road rage incidents were like super up skyrocketing. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like terrifying to me. Like the, the, the lack of fear of doing that in the middle of the day on a, on a street like that is like near main street, but also it's like, like a, a, whole, a, Suburb like, like houses, suburb and yeah. Street like I don't know. Ring like, cameras as far as the eye yeah, can like, see. I, I, just, I like, took a picture of his car. Like, yeah, like that's like I think maybe what freaks me out the most is just like the blatantness with which this happened, and then the the, the complete lack of fear of repercussion. And yeah, I couldn't believe you didn't cry. I would have been hysterically crying for like hours afterwards. I was shaking. I mean, I was mostly shaking, and then I and then I passed out for two hours because I was so worked up. And then I immediately fell asleep. You were in your um, session. You caught me sleeping on the couch. I initially fell asleep for like 30 minutes on your floor in your bedroom. Because I was like, I couldn't get up. And I also you was... went into my bedroom? And slept on the floor, yeah. Why? I don't know. I wanted to be on the floor. And I couldn't really move. And I was frozen. And I... And I and then I thought I should get up and sleep but on why the... Why wouldn't you sleep on... Why would you choose the floor of my bedroom and not the rug that's right here? I want it to be on the hard floor. I was... I Like, I don't know. Just trauma. I don't know. <laughs> and and, um, and um, I wanted to be on the floor where it was cold and hard. And then um, I was like, she's going to think I, I passed out and hit my head or something. So I was like, you have to go to the couch so Allison doesn't think that you are um, fainted or something. So anyway, that's where I was though. But I, I like laid, you know, like sometimes you're just like broken. I don't know. So I just laid on the floor like star. No, I love to lie on the floor. I just think it's funny you went in the bedroom because there's like four right there. I think I it's was just trying funny to, to go to the bedroom to lie on the floor. Yeah, I think I was, <laughs> my brain is scrambled eggs. And then John came and then John and I drank some whiskey, which was nice. Um, you guys were, just, you guys got me dinner. You guys were very, very nice. I'm so glad I was in front of a, a house of someone who... Uh, is a put together person and I know that that's like rich but you know what I mean like that it was like okay there's like safe you know I don't know that it was like in front of a safe place yeah of course I but mean, I also felt bad I kept feeling bad that I was like doing this to you at this point I'm like what's next world yeah <laughs> like, it just it's like what terrible thing will happen next to me or someone I love yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, and... And as we know, I'm excellent in a crisis. You were. You were. Um, Minor inconveniences, not so much, but excellent in a crisis. Absolute crisis, yeah, exactly. Mostly, I also felt, like, embarrassed because I felt like it was, like, I am so hyper-vigilant of stuff, and then I, like, I'm, like, oh, caught me slipping, you know? Like, you know, like, I'm, like, the, the of course, like, I was, like, it's 1 p.m., I'm in, you know, a nice part of town, like... I'm like, there's, I didn't see anyone behind, like, it was so out of nowhere, um, that I was like, ah, the, the, t the one time you turn your back, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but that's the sort of thought processes you're going to have to work through. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, I have not relaxed my shoulders in years. I literally texted my friend Chris, add it to the pile. And he was like, are you okay? Like trying to talk to me. And I was like, I said, add it to the pile.
Um, no, I, the woman on the phone, I talked to the, the insurance woman on the phone today to give her my statement. And after she, we stopped with the official recording of the statement, she was like, are you okay? And I said out loud to her, I said, no, I'm in therapy again. (laughs) So one, I've been trying to find resources for victims of like random violent crime. So if anybody knows anyone or any resources, um, and two, simultaneously, I feel like I'm overreacting like, like, oh, it was fine. Like, I don't even know. Did anything even happen? Pro- no, like nothing even happened. To then being like, oh no, I'm underreacting. Mm-hmm. To then being like, I'm, I, this is so embarrassing to like have this. So like when people are like, how was your week? It's like embarrassing to be like, this crazy thing happened. And then it's like kind of embarrassing to have to like recount it to people the footage, the ring footage is embarrassing to me because I'm like screaming for help and that feels like vulnerable and embarrassing to have to like send that to multiple people. Like, I don't know. I said to Alex, I feel like a speck. And he was like, I don't know what that means. And I was like, I, I just, I feel like a, like a little speck of dust. Mm. So this is probably like, I, I think like putting this in a video uh, before um, uh, talking about it to a therapist is, is uh, sort of, how we do. But I'm proud of us that we didn't record that day. No. And and if you notice that we missed a Thursday, that's why. Yeah. And I feel like us as workaholics, like seven years ago, would have been like, well, we should just record something. Yeah. And we both were mature enough to be like, we shall not record today. Mm -hmm. So anyway, remember when we said that season 11 of this show was going to be like boring because what more could happen? I transitioned and you got married. We did this to ourselves. I really, I don't think I killed my mom, but... No! Oh my god! I thought you were going to say a channel where we talk about the most traumatic things that are happening to us as they're happening to us, (laughs) which is sort of a tagline now, I guess.